Let's see. Michael posted a movie. Uh, Friday. Well, we're just over 12 hours into the block party. The 11th consecutive block party. <laughs> My goodness. You know, what I'm, what I'm seeing here in kind of the evolution and what we're focusing on and what we're developing what I'm seeing is an ability to um, evolve and adapt to whatever the current conditions are on earth at the moment and put our focus where it needs to go. So a couple months ago, we were very focused on SRM, SRM, right, as the most urgent thing. Now we focused on eradicating hunger and pandemics with whole food, plant-based diets. Um, wow. And basically, we're developing a collective capacity to face any problem, any challenge, any set of circumstances, and be able to come up with solutions. I mean, that's the ultimate measure of collective intelligence. Can we come up with solutions? Can we come up with solutions to our most challenging problems? And can we, on the positive side, can we address our biggest opportunities? And then of course, in addition to specific solutions to specific problems, whether it's planetary overheating or hunger or pandemics or whatever, in addition to that, working on the machinery of collective superintelligence itself, the machinery to generate the solutions. And that thinking and exploration is going really, really well. Lots to say about that too. I mean, the short answer is, you know, it's just, it's kind of emergent, right? From all these different video conferences that are happening everywhere, right? And there are kind of localized efforts to cluster together and organize a bit. Um, and, I think that by uh, eradicating hunger and eradicating pandemics in the way that we've identified, um, I think that will spur on the evolution of collective superintelligence. Um,
in a way that's very like um very organic in the sense that the whole foods plants will be grown from the ground in a way that it's known where it comes from how it's grown we have conversations about how to do it in the best way possible that produces the healthiest food and that has the healthiest impact overall on the environment on the ecosystems so we have the ideal of edible living forests we also have you know permaculture i mean there's so many ways of growing food what's the right mix right we need to figure all that out and i think um you know just the, elim the uh, of course the elimination of animal agriculture takes us you know like way more than halfway there <laughs> from here to the ideal right i mean that's just like that's the vast majority is solved just with that but then we still have a lot a, you know a lot of improvement to say the least in just plant-based agriculture right so much to improve and uh you know to what extent do we uh is the solution families growing their own foods at home to what extent versus the complement, which is bringing in food from farms or edible living forests. More, you know, community permaculture or whatever. Yeah, just want to add a point. Like, if we, if we like, even in, in our yard or even in the porch or whatever, if you could uh, have some, some kind of food garden, simple food garden, like that would leave a lot of surplus in the community, even if it is seasonal. So there will be like, because they're all perishable, like how much you cannot really, you can, maybe you can freeze it or, but in a simple sense, like you could even, in a community, something there will be always uh, excess or some sort of surplus. Then I, I can't know, like even the lot of mass producers, uh, like the farm, they do like the grading or something. So that means if there is a slight uh, cut or slight, like a some kind of a dark spot, they, they say, oh no, this won't go to the supermarket. So maybe if we accumulate all those, that's enough for awesome cooking. <laughs> Gotta worry about distribution now. Yeah, yeah. No, th th these, are all, these are all parts of it. And um, you know, two points about that the optimal you know set of solutions right will be different from one place to the next obviously but the optimal set of solutions even in one place will evolve over time right because certain investments in permaculture for example may take years to bear fruit so to speak fruit trees etc cetera, etc cetera. so there's certain long-term investments okay fine now that we've made those investments what do we do in the meantime? You know, maybe we source from farms, we source from even other regions of the country. I, I'm not opposed to, um, you know, the transportation of food even over distances, as long as it's efficient. With steamships, um, that's efficient, very efficient, right? Um, it's things like refrigeration that can make it expensive. But even that, I don't know if that can be done um, at scale efficiently. I just don't know uh, for, you know, long steamship routes. Um, but uh, the bottom line is it really boils down to one giant optimization problem, <laughs> right? We have all these different sources of supply, right? All these different areas of demand. How do we find the optimal matchmaking? Right. Start start somewhere because instead of uh, having too much like big abstract, like start somewhere, then it'll start. It'll go very critical. Like a kind of a, then there will be enough motivation to address that. 
issues or something so that will give us stability yeah that, that, that's exactly right you've summed it up very well uh shankar we start somewhere we start with one city big press conference you know that will draw in so much focus right one percent of humanity that's our goal we're only asking for one percent 77 million people jumping in and participating in the collective intelligence that will go super intelligent right and it'll go super intelligent around something that's very grounded you don't get much more grounded than roots of plants in the ground right so we're applying our collective intelligence to something very very grounded and something that covers the whole world and um as such it just it it, it kind of feels like the perfect preschool or kindergarten for collective super intelligence because it's so grounded right and then once we graduate from kindergarten and we're up into high school now we take on srm right because that's now a bit removed from the groundedness of plants these are human made materials this is about something that's frankly practically interstellar it's about too much energy coming from the sun we've got to reflect some of it away it's very heady very scientific and as such because it's not as obvious as something like food we need a really robust collective super intelligence to figure out like the marketing of it the communication this and that the storytelling you know nobody needs much storytelling when it comes to hey i'm hungry i need food everyone experiences that three times a day right if not more <laughs> and uh, anyway all i'm saying is what a great training ground and development opportunity for collective super intelligence yes yeah jim and i was thinking maybe everybody wears the coronavirus mask earth, earth needs a mask from the solar radiation srm solar radiation mask <laughs> Wow. <laughs> All right. Sarah, you got your hand up. Yeah, I was actually just going by what Shankar just said, and I almost think I might have forgotten what I was going to ask you a question. Oh, I was going to ask you a question about solar radiation management. Don't you think that by doing this food program that it will cut down on the solar radiation because of just in general nature. I mean, just because of the sun won't be blazing down. I don't know. I just think that it would be, this kind of goes in conjunction with solar radiation management, I think. I don't know. Just Well, the big, big picture is um, that obviously by getting rid of animal agriculture and just going plant-based, we're going to be healing uh, the planet overall. So that's the big, big picture. But the reality of how bad it's gotten in terms of planetary overheating and the melting of the ice and the heating up of the oceans, um, we're actually in a super delicate space right now where we have very little time left before it's just essentially collapse because of overheating ecosystem collapse including collapse of our own ability as humans to grow food to grow crops to grow grains to grow any kind of to grow any kind of crops we're um we're dangerously close to going that far past the tipping point and then it's we're in a really really tough spot at that point obviously um and the the only it turns out that the only way to prevent that in the short term in spite of all the kind of the good things that are happening from economic contraction it turns out that economic contraction is resulting in less particulates going up in the air which means less global dimming basically we're not we're now getting more sunlight than we were before because of the economic contraction so things are overheating even more quickly than the already 
insanely fast overheating. So basically, net net things have actually gotten worse and more urgent from the standpoint of planetary overheating. The good news is we can solve it, the overheating part, with solar radiation management. So it's it's even more urgent than it was when we started the block party um, 10 weeks ago. And, uh, but you know, back to what I was just saying, with ending world hunger and ending p pandemics and going plant-based, we're developing the collective intelligence, you know, muscles and, and neuronal connections and platform. We're going to develop a really great platform for this just with the focus of ending hunger, right? With all the different related topics mapped out, permaculture, agriculture, um, you know, grains versus produce, um, you know, foods grown indoors, inside homes, vertical gardening, vertical farming, et cetera, et cetera, right? Drip irrigation, open field irrigation, right? Organic versus non-organic. Soil erosion, fertilization, all kinds of topics, right? Um, restaurants and how, what the roles that they play. Food distribution, how to do it. Do we serve food that's like frozen or refrigerated that people then need to heat up? Or do we deliver it warm? and ready to eat? You know, these are all important questions. So a collective intelligence is going to form around all these topics in a very organized way. Um, and that's going to, that'll be our training wheels for collective intelligence generally. That's really exciting. Because we're going to need the collective intelligence to really properly take on SRM in time. All this is going to need to happen boom, 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 really fast, right? And I forget who, uh, which of our wonderful ladies said that we get the sequence of cities all lined up so that we do the first one. And then within a couple of days, another city announces that they're in. And then another, and another, and another, and another, and then different countries. Right? Um, I have a feeling that'll sort itself out um, because we're gonna kick over the first domino and it's just gonna go crazy. What a story. Ending world hunger? Really? 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 Well, then why didn't we do it before? Right? There's going to be anger. There's going to be frustration. There's going to be tears. There's going to be people getting together and working stuff out. And lots of good news to cover. And that first city will become a hotbed for research and development, for media coverage, for analysis, <laughs> right? Testing, all kinds of good stuff. It'll be the talk of the world. And then every country will get in the game and they'll pick their first city. There'll be a city in India that'll commit to eradicating hunger. A city in France. A city in Australia, you name it. It's not just eradicating hunger, it's eradicating hunger and pandemics. How do you do that? Whole food plant based. What? Yeah, you heard me. And then it goes from there.
And timing is everything. And we're striking right at the perfect time with a message that is so big and bold that he goes beyond any solutioneering that's uh, been happening to date. This is the big one, let's face it. Why? Because it covers eradicating hunger, eradicating pandemics, eradicating carnivorism, collective superintelligence, and SRM. Those are what I call the big five opportunities. Hey, Jamin, can you just say the big five one more time? I'm going to put that in my notes. I am so happy to, Sarah. Thank you. I Not could, the big five in Africa. <laughs> I, I, I could say it all day long like a rap song. Okay, tell me. Eradicating hunger. Eradicating pandemics. Eradicating carnivorism. I'm just kind of giving it the most colorful, you know, uh, but, you know, one could say going 100% plant-based if you wanted to say it in a more positive light, whatever. But you get my point, plant-based versus carnivorism, right? Um, or meat and dairy, whatever. All right. So I'm up to three. Uh, number four is collective superintelligence. And number five is SRM solar radiation management to cool the planet. And, um, and that's kind of roughly the, not roughly, that's pretty much spot on the sequence with which the story will be told, those elements of the story, those chapters of the story. Because the story is we're eradicating hunger in a way that's also conducive to eradicating pandemics the current one and future ones, right? Um, in a way that's 100% plant-based for a whole bunch of reasons. In the process, we are manifesting and cultivating a planetary collective superintelligence to make all this happen as quickly as possible and in the best possible way. And then fifth and finally, we then take this massive collective superintelligence and point the gigantic planetary laser beam on SRM and we do it. Voila, that's the story. That's a beautiful story and we've got, uh, I think until this summer to get it done. It, exactly, you've got, well serious, no, you're, you're absolutely right. Because this summer, we need SRM going up around the, the Northern Hemisphere. And we need to refreeze the Arctic. And we, we've discussed on the block party, we've spent many hours, probably dozens of hours total, talking about uh, different forms of SRM. But to get the whole story going, we're starting with food. To get the whole pipeline going, really. Well, everything evolved, evolved, evolves around food, right? Everything. It almost seems like that's all people think about. How are they going to get money so they can put food on the table? That is a really good point, Sarah. And we come to the whole world with a gigantic solution that just says, boom, problem solved. Hey, Sarah, that thing that, you, that everyone was thinking about all the time, we just solved it for everyone, for all time. <laughs> Boom. I should have been a rap star. Jamin, I definitely think you should get your hair cut for the press conference. I'll, I'll, so you better start, just start trimming it now so you can get used to it. You can grow it back. It doesn't matter. It's hair. It'll grow. What am I supposed to do, trim a little bit every day? No, I'm just going to get one fell swoop haircut. Well, who's going to cut your hair during the, during the lockdown? Uh, probably Melissa. Okay. I think you should definitely get it cut. I, I mean, I just like, I'm sorry. Yeah, go ahead. I, I, I don't even think that's relevant, to be honest. Like, I know, like, you're talking about very broad subjects and, like, 
you know, going in and in a uniform to talk about broad subjects. You know, I just I just don't think that's very relevant if I if I may say. Well, I don't know. Anyway, we'll 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 sleep on that one. We don't have to figure that one out till the night before anyway. So <laughs> You, you, and you're on mute, Sarah. Um. <laughs> I know I am. But I'm, I'm saying that because um, from the press conference that you actually just did years ago, but you showed us today, that don't you think that looking more, unfortunately, playing that part of the messenger because it's only going to be your yeah because you know what you, you're you're absolutely right it's all about perception perception is reality no, no. no matter what anybody thinks perception is reality and we yeah. all know that yeah 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 i i i think you're right sarah that's my that's my conclusion because in that press conference that i played for everyone um you know you got to focus on the message because i was just like clean cut you know boom boom you know uh, it's like all right you got to focus on the message. If I went looking like I look now, you'd focus on the hair and you'd say, why does he have long hair? Right. You know what I'm saying? It would take away from the message. I think that's, I think that's partly what you're saying. But anyway. Exactly. That is what I was, exactly. That is exactly what I was saying. It has nothing to do with personal yeah. or anything like that. It has to do with just the way things are right now. And, just even when I met you, I was like, oh, that's a cool guy. You know, he's got this cool headband in his hair, whatever, you know. You know, I was at Vegan World 2026 conference, but when we're talking about people that eat meat, dairy, and eggs, and 97% of the population does, even though I hate to admit that, I hate to say that, it makes me depressed. It's true and it's reality. It's, it's whatever they perceive you as is reality, and you know that because you were been in that world, you've been in that corporate world. So when you're going to get in front of the world and talk about how we're going to eradicate world hunger, the world is probably going to expect this, maybe not corporate person, but just whatever they, you know what I mean? Like how people perceive. I, no, I, I know exactly what yeah, you mean. People perceive me as some dumb Southern, some girl with some Southern accent. I mean, they would never know that I went to grad school and all the stuff that I did, but you know what I mean? Like, that's just people's perception, but that's just whatever. We all know how you are and what you are, and that's fine, but this is a big global thing. That's why I'm bringing that up. It has nothing to do with being. Yeah, yeah. And, and also. Um... But it's, not, it's not me trying to be catty in any way. It's me trying to be realistic and being in reality, unfortunately. You can still be clean cut and just grab it in a ponytail. I mean, like, yeah, exactly. Right. All right. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I mean, it's just when I saw it, it's just when I saw you in the video with your suit on and everything, it just gives a different perception. You know, that's all. And like I said, unfortunately, since not everybody's vegan, we can't all appreciate your free spirit totally. but totally. most people are not even you know even listen most people don't even want gay people or other anybody that's different than themselves they don't like it unfortunately that's just the way it is people don't like vegans even though we're just regular people that don't hurt animals it's the stupidest thing i ever heard of but it's just like we're some weird people right but we're just like them pigs are pink dogs but unfortunately people don't see pigs as pink dogs they see them as bacon as pork chops as sausage we see them as pink dogs but we are here to sell our app right isn't that what it's all about you have to sell unfortunately you have to sell this because if you didn't have to sell it then we wouldn't be on this zoom call trying to figure it out right it'd nope. already be done Totally. Right? It's a common sense. Yeah. This is a common one plus one equals two. But unfortunately, because people eat meat, dairy, and eggs, they cannot even conceptualize past their taste buds. It's very rare to find somebody that can 
we are, we are vegans from planet. I mean, we are, we are from planet vegan. That's what we are from planet vegan. And we need to help this earth. I always say that. My friend says she's from Mars. She keeps always telling me she's from Mars. And I think she's crazy. And she's also my vegan bestie. But now I realize she's right. We are from a different planet. We are from planet vegan. And we have to tell these earthlings, hey, we can help you. We know how to solve world hunger. Even though it's the most obvious thing ever, just like going vegan. It's the most obvious thing to me when I, somebody said to me, if you love animals so much, then why are you, when then why do you eat them? And I was like, what? Oh my God. And it just clicked. But that does not happen to most people. Somehow they have to come to their decision on their own and it could take them a million gazillion years. It seems like. It seems like such an obvious thing, but like I said, Jamin, you're the part, you got to be the salesperson and people see salespeople in a certain way, right? Yeah. When you go to buy a BMW, yeah. when I went to buy my BMW electric, you're I didn't care what I looked like because I knew I could go in there and afford it. I didn't give a crap, but I knew that the person that sold me the car probably needed to be looking pretty decent, right? I mean, yeah. you know, so we're all like that. I mean, don't try to act like we're not like that. We are like that. We just need to rise above. But yeah, people don't like to admit that they're, they judge other people, but everybody judges everybody. And it's not because we are trying to, it's because unfortunately it's been ingrained in us. We have been brainwashed, but this is going to help unbrainwash everybody, obviously. Totally. But yeah. How are you going to sell this? You you should sell it the same way you did at the last press conference. You see what I'm saying? Because it worked. Exactly. Don't mess with success. Right. It worked. So it worked for a reason, right? It's great. I just think that you should get, we, I'm ready to do this like next week. <laughs> no, I am too. The sooner the better. Let's, let's get our city. Let's get our city lined up. Once we get our city lined up, then we can start putting down pillars in that city. Where is it going to be? What are the restaurants? Boom, boom, boom. Who are the people? Who are the pillars? All right. Welcome, Nancy. Nancy, how you doing? Good. <laughs> how are you? Fantastic. We're having quite a time here. We are um, in... Oh, a lot of people here. Oh, my goodness. No, we, we've had, uh, you know, I don't know, got up, in, up into the mid-20s or higher um, at certain points today. Uh, it's, it's been awesome. It's been a really awesome block party. So, welcome. <laughs> I need two people from Maryland. <laughs> <laughs> two people from Mar Maryland, huh? We've had four people from Ireland today, two from Maryland, a few from Washington, I mean Washington. And we got the real Nolan here. Awesome. So you think. <laughs> I've been listening for like the past five minutes. I just jumped in. So. Oh, awesome. Oh my goodness, speaking of evil twins, I see Nancy. I'm sorry. I need to leave the one on my computer. There we go. All right. Man, I. I barely use this on a on mobile and uh, it's just so much better on a computer you can see everyone yeah 
I never used it on a computer. It's just all been mobile because my two of my laptops are not working. And I don't know how it is to see you guys all at once. I have to be going, uh, sliding my, my phone up and down. I feel like they need a way to, for you to pick who you see or something because it seems a little wacky on mobile. Yeah, at least phone you can make like a, maybe they can make it like uh, at least eight people or something. I think at this point you can see three or four, I think. If you slide it, you can see, then you have to four slide it, slide it. Damon, when are you going to um, decide uh, on the city? When are you going to talk to Dr. Rao? Because he was pretty clear that he wanted to start it in Phoenix. Yeah. Uh, I'd love to talk with uh, Silas as soon as possible about that. And uh, um, because we've we've got a, a number of good candidates in the running, and um, besides Phoenix and Louisville, what's the other one? Uh, Berkeley, California, is another. Oh my God, that would be amazing! You know, Wayne is running for mayor, right, of Berkeley? Yeah, yeah. Wayne, the former DXE. Yeah, he's running for mayor. Twenty twenty one. Now help me out. What's a DXE? Direct action everywhere. Oh, thank you, thank you. So like when I ran on stage during Joe Biden's Super Tuesday thing, that was me that disrupted him. Um, yeah, that direct action everywhere actually took, even though it was just me and Ashley, somehow because direct action everywhere got interviewed by the New York Times, they ended up taking credit for it. But it's fine because they disrupted every other presidential campaign. So I was like, fine, whatever. But my thing is, is that because of social distancing and because of the pandemic and the lockdown, he may not be able to fly. So that's why I'm thinking he might want to do it in Phoenix, even though I would think it would probably take off better in another city, but I can't say for sure. What do you think, Nolan? The real Nolan? Um, well, I was fumbling with meeting controls, so, um, I was a little bit distracted. Maybe you can repeat your question. My question is just, what do you think the city would be best originated for this press conference? Because Dr. Rao says Phoenix, like Tempe, because that's where he lives. And I'm thinking he's saying that because of the social distancing and the pandemic, but maybe another city might be better, but like Jamin just said, Berkeley was on the slate and uh, maybe Louisville, but Berkeley would be freaking amazing. But then people would probably be like, yeah, well, it's Berkeley. So of course they're going to say that. But if you did it in Phoenix where all the freaking Republicans live and go to the um, Golden Corral, as Jamin knows, when, since we disrupted that nasty place, I think it'd be great to do it in Phoenix because, but then it could be seen as, you know, West coast thinking so that's why you did it in louisville it's almost like almost in the south but kind of in the midwest and kind of close to the like it seems like i don't know that's why ups chose to move to put their headquarters there right yeah yeah so louisville, uh, louisville so tired kind of dead center population wise right um and it's where North meets South, like Sarah says. Personally, I think Louisville would be perfect. And it's and the mayor has already, you know, done the throwdown that he says that that's they're the most Louisville's the most compassionate city in America. All right. Are you ready to prove it? I would like to um have it in Louisville only because I was born and raised there. <laughs> well, the next biggest city right next door is Shively, Kentucky. Oh, is that you? 
That's me. I'm James. Wow. Shively. I think I've actually been to Shively, possibly. Huh. Interesting. So I, I think of it as the Louisville Shively metropolitan area. I mean, it wasn't very far from Indiana, that's for sure. Yeah. Just right, right over the river. Yeah, right across the river, exactly. Yeah, it's pretty close to the Midwest. And, but are people in the Midwest Republicans or Democrats? I don't know. It's a mix. Republicans. Lately, Republicans, yeah. I think so, yeah. Considering, yeah. Yeah. I'm thinking, yeah. Interesting. So if you can just talk Republicans into solving world hunger, then they're going to think that they're the greatest people ever. And that's fine if they want to take credit for it great because then they have a lot of money and we can get them to donate you know because what republicans have is all that evangelical money because there's 22 evangelicals so republicans have all that evangelical money and they have a lot of money and they like to feed hungry remember they're doing god's work no offense to any christians on here but i'm just saying that's what they're thing says right it's all about jesus and giving back so i think that'd be great if the president trump wants to take credit for <laughs> solving world hunger and solving the pandemic if we that would be amazing if he did that right and he would be like yeah i solved the pandemic and he could take credit for it because then it would really be happening and he's got a lot of billionaire friends otherwise he wouldn't be in the white house <laughs> So what do you guys think about targeting a city based on the amount that they, I don't know, let's say amount of um, homelessness? Well, the cities with the most homeless are the biggest cities. And... Uh, a big city presents a lot of challenges and um, it, you know, I really liked Sarah's analysis of, you know, Berkeley, but then, uh, then they say, Oh, that's because they're Berkeley crazy. They, they try, they'll try anything once there. It's just another flash in the pan, whatever, you know, Phoenix. Oh yeah. But it's because they're out West and whatever, but Louisville, it's like, Whoa, this is an old city you know, very middle of America, right? What's going on in Louisville? Um, and for the same reason, I think a big city would be like, you know, I mean, try to do something in New York. There's a million things happening in New York at any given moment. So it'd be hard to uh, get that to be center stage. But Louisville, nothing, nothing huge has ever happened in Louisville, right? It has yet to be put on the map. Except Muhammad Ali. Well, yeah, he's a person, not a not an event. An event? Oh no, the Kentucky Derby. Remember? Oh the, yeah. How they like to kill horses? Yeah, it's the biggest uh, sporting and horse racing. It's the biggest event in, in horse racing, a blood sport. Yeah, I'm not proud to be from there, but oh. yeah, you're well, right. I think Louisville is a really good city to do it in because, and also because of um, South Bend, Indiana. Remember, it's close to Indiana, and Pete Buttigieg. That's how he got South Bend on the map because nobody, except for like, I guess Notre Dame's in South Bend, but really nobody really talks about South Bend much, right? But now you hear of all these people talking about South Bend because of Pete Buttigieg. So yeah, this moral hunger thing could just definitely get that city on the map. I think it's perfect. I think, I think, frankly, I think Louisville would be the perfect city for it. And, <laughs> this is so exciting. Oh my goodness. Well, I mean, shoot, we just got to, I, I can't wait to talk to the mayor. John Ray John Raymer's in tight with the mayor. Oh yeah, for sure. He, you should tell him about my family because my godfather uh, was the uh, Secretary of Commerce for the whole state of Kentucky when I was growing up. He worked for John Y. Brown, the governor. But I didn't really know. I just I just knew that my godparents were very wealthy. I just did not know anything else. But I just always knew when we went to their house, it was like crazy rich. But yeah, I didn't know anything about the pol politics. But my whole family's in politics apparently. And in horse in own horses that go into Kentucky Derby, and go against me because I uh, protest at all those uh, horse races. So yeah, it's really stressful for me because they literally like 
that my family doesn't even want to talk to me because I'm a vegan activist and they just think I'm just crazy. And yeah, we're really, really, they're the crazy ones. All right, I just thought of a I just thought of a meme that'll go with Louisville and ending hunger. Here it is. Pummeling hunger. Cuz you got Muhammad Ali pummeling hunger. You got the Louisville slugger pummeling <laughs> hunger. It's a little violent, but you know what? It's time that we got violent on this mofo. Fuck. I don't think the word pummeling is a really good. Um, it's great that you thought of that, and I appreciate that. But I think, yeah, pummeling, people just don't even understand that much. Please remember who your audience is. You've got to make it really simple. Like, everybody's into this stay at home, safer at home. Wow, genius. How did you think of that? Stay at home. Wow. Wow, that is so genius. And everybody wear a mask. <laughs> Even if you're going to end up sucking in airs on the side of your mask, it doesn't matter. Just put something on your face. Wait, oh, yeah. Wear a mask and go buy a bunch of dead body parts. <laughs> That's going to kill you. I mean, and then they told everybody on LA last night, I was listening to the local news on my iPad, and they were like, okay, folks. This just in breaking news. <laughs> Do not wear masks when you're running. And I literally saw, because I was on a trail walking, and I saw so many runners run past me wearing masks. And I was like, oh my God, they really do have to tell people not to wear masks when they're running. Like, so what I'm saying, Jamin, is you have to dumb it down for the hashtag. Like, bad out, or oh, home run, like, or something like that they can understand. Like, like it, it just can be really simple. Well, instead of <laughs> instead of pummeling, then use Silas Resch's one where he talks about changing from the caterpillar stage to the butterfly, and Muhammad Ali floated like a butterfly and stung like a bee. So we call it the Louisville butterfly. That's good. The butterfly effect, Louisville style. The Louisville butterfly effect. Effect. Yeah, exactly. But yeah, because we're going to flap our wings in Louisville and it's going to spread all around the world. It has to do with Dr. Rao's book. Remember, Did you, I've read both of his books. So it has to do with uh, carbon, carbon yoga, unless it's carbon dharma, one or the other. And it talks about, you know, Jackie knows what I'm talking about, the caterpillar coming out to be the butterfly. And it's even he has a, uh, a illustration in the book about it. Yeah, butterfly effect is good, but it might already be taken. I don't know. I think just feed the world, <laughs> hashtag feed the world. I mean, people can pretty much understand how to spell that. M not many people can spell butterfly, right? I mean, just remember who you're talking to, your audience. You can't overestimate your audience. Under, over, underestimate and yeah. over deliver. <laughs> Nancy, go for it. Um, uh, hi. Oh, I'm not muted. Um, sorry, I got here late. What are you talking about event? Are you talking about having? All right, Nancy, welcome to the future, sister. Here's the, <laughs> here is the headline. All right. So in fact, this is, this is a great opportunity for us to actually, um, kind of practice how we would introduce the topic, right, to the world. In fact, who would like to begin? I'm just gonna mute and whoever would like to jump in, just feel free. We're, 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 we're summarizing it for Nancy and for the world since we're- recording. Jackie, Jackie can do it. Jackie's the, she knows how to do it. She's also got her mouth full, so anyway, I'm just, I, I don't wanna put all the pressure 
remember, one of the rules of the Block Party is no one is ever pressured to speak on the Block Party. <laughs> See, now I lost all my words because I was put on the spot. <laughs> Here, I'll tell you what. Let, let, let me help you out there, Jackie. Um, maybe get a drink of water or something. And then just jump in whenever you feel like it. But uh, so, Nancy, um, just imagine. Here, here's a good way to just think about it. Imagine there's a, a big press conference called in Louisville, Kentucky. And at the press conference is Silish. Dr. Priya, who was on last Saturday, um, John Raymer, uh, all of us, uh, Jackie playing an important leadership role, um, but really all of us there. And the topic is of the press conference is that we are announcing that we are, and, and imagine that the mayor of Louisville, Kentucky is there and a whole bunch of pillars of the community religious, community, educational, you name it, right? All these community leaders and all together, all of us are committing to permanently eradicate hunger in Louisville, Kentucky by delivering whole food, plant-based, nutritious foods to everyone in the city of Louisville who will receive it. We'll go door by door and we'll set up recurring delivery programs so that people don't have to leave their homes, right? They get the food delivered to them and it's whole food, plant-based immune boosting, right? And so what we do is we achieve three things at once, eradicate hunger, eradicate pandemics, and eradicate carnivorism, right? Go plant-based. Now, we, but we do this, but, and the story goes like this. We do that, we're doing this first in Louisville as a first step towards doing it everywhere in the world without exception. We are eradicating hunger everywhere. We're eradicating pandemics everywhere. We're going plant-based everywhere. As such, this story will be tremendously controversial. Whoa. What's all this vegan thing, man? Why vegan? Well, among other reasons, pandemics, all of them, are caused by humans eating other animals, right? Um, and then there's a whole bunch of other reasons why pandemics boosting immune system, da 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 da. For for all this, for why you know why why plant based. For all this, uh, we we now turn to Dr. Priya Knight, who leads a whole medical team covering every aspect of it. Yeah, she's amazing. I remember her. Yeah, well, she was on earlier today, and yeah, she is just incredible. So, um, this this will then this will be a message that'll go around the country and around the world that there's an American city committing to eradicating hunger permanently. And the mayor is committing to it. And Dr. Silas Rao and Dr. Priya Naik and this Jamin Chively guy who just got a haircut and you know, et cetera, et cetera. Right. And voila, we now have an incredible, power packed story about eradicating hunger and eradicating pandemics to the point that those two become the lead bullet points. Even the plant base takes a backseat to those two. The plant base. Okay. Wow. Wow. Love it. Love it. Great. And how are you going to do it? Well, you know, we'll be delivering, you know, plant-based food. Well, why plant-based? And then that's a whole conversation, but that's now a tangent. Right. The headline is no more. Yeah, in, in addition to, um, yeah, I remember you. Oh, thank you for holding me in. I'm sorry to interrupt. But in addition to, uh, um, you know, the uh, pandemics and, and health, 
plant-based food is by far easier and safer to make and produce and disseminate on a large scale because uh because i you know with my uh my business botanic cuisine i done a lot of research into the food industry and I took a serve safe manager course and I found out how much uh, trouble it is you know which we know for animal products so it's really the safest because things like beans and grains can be kept for months you know and you don't have to worry about contaminated surfaces you don't have to worry about keeping foods at all these different levels in, in the freezer it's just like it's a thousand percent easier Exactly. And then complementing those dry foods are the fresh veg. And that's just on a whole different time, time scale, as quick as possible, basically. And, um, and so uh, this will blast its way into the world's mind as, oh my God, right? Humanity is finally setting about eradicating hunger. And there will be tears of joy. There will be questions. There will be exclamations of, well, that's impossible. Right? Uh, honey, they're doing it in Louisville. Uh, all right. You see the stages of acceptance, right? Yeah, it's brilliant. <laughs> and, and then... And then the larger, bigger picture, Nancy, goes like this, okay? Five big points. Three of them we've already covered. Two of them are part of this kind of a bit longer narrative. Here it goes. For, but from beginning to end, we're going to eradicate hunger and eradicate pandemics with whole food plant-based. In the process, we are going to build a planetary scale collective super intelligence focused on making all this happen and all be optimal and balanced between Nancy growing, let us grow inside her own house versus getting other foods delivered to complement, And, you know, because you probably don't have a cornfield in your backyard, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so the collective super intelligence will strike that optimal balance. It'll figure it all out right down to the neighborhood, right down to the household, even to the individual, special dietary needs, what have you. If we're gonna do it, we might as well do it right. And we certainly have the tools and technologies to do it right. So let's do it right, right? It's the same amount of food. We might as well get it right, okay? So um, that, and then that's the fourth thing is collective super intelligence. And then we will use that collective superintelligence to take on something much less intuitive, much less grounded, much less obvious, much less organic. And that is cooling our planet using solar radiation management. And we need a whole plethora of solutions from the political to the cultural, to the religious, to the logistical, to the ocean engineering, to the mechanical engineering, to the material science engineering, to the manufacturing, to the finance, to the government, to the regulatory, to who owns the oceans anyway. That's going to take some powerful collective superintelligence. So the collective superintelligence is going to build its muscles pumping iron in the laboratory of eradicating hunger and eradicating pandemics. And, and as it matures, based on these very grounded roots, because what could be more grounding than roots of plants in delicious, nutritious soil? It's just so elemental. So starting from this very grounded, organic, natural domain of food, we then take that collective superintelligence and train it on planetary overheating and SRM and getting it done in time because we're running out of time. So all of this is going to play like, you know, a five stage James Bond sequence, right? 
Oh, first he's jumping up off a bridge. Okay, and then he lands on this. Okay, and then, okay. Uh, 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 uh. You know, one, two, three, four, five. Bam, 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 bam. This is our last best hope for survival as a species. Because Nancy, as much as you and I love SRM, we ain't gonna do SRM in a Mad Max world. It just ain't gonna happen. Certainly not in time. What's SRM? I forgot. Solar radiation management. Oh. I have a question. Um, Silish did a video, I think earlier this week, where he talked about, um, you know, ending like fossil fuels and ending animal agriculture. And he made a point of saying that you need to end animal agriculture first. Because in greenhouse gases, there is a cooling effect of some of the gases, and then there's a but there's still a net release of way too many. So would this mirrors to cool the planet? Would that allow us to end animal agriculture before greenhouse gases? Because it seems to me that it would actually be easier and more feasible to end greenhouse gases than. Um, uh, uh, you know, animal agriculture than things like big oil and because the systems that we have, you know, they're very cleverly made us totally dependent upon these systems. And if you, you can't really extract all of it that fast because we're still so dependent on those. So that's, is that, would that, would you know if that figures in to play that? Yeah, yeah what, what you're saying makes perfect sense. I believe it's really easier to go plant-based than to uh, addict oil, right? Um, so I totally agree with you there. Um, I think when Silas says that we have to go, you know, change our diet, anyway, we get a lot of background noise from you, Nancy. I'm just going to mute you. Okay, I've muted you so you don't have to worry about it. Um, uh, I think what Silas is referring to is, um, you know, the loss of global dimming that we would experience if we got rid of, you know, say burning coal all of a sudden. Well, we're experiencing that loss of global dimming right now with the contract, with the economic contraction associated with what I'm calling the Dos Equis uh, pandemic, so that I don't use the C word. Um, <laughs> anyway, so, um, uh, yeah, so, um, but if we, but as we, but if we do SRM, then we can, we can confidently decarbonize with the attendant loss of global dimming, because we'll have replaced it with SRM. We'll have compensated for that with SRM. What's the lead time and financial plan to do SRM? How long would it actually take to implement it? Yeah. Um, with if it's, and does Bill Gates agree with it? Well, it's, funny, <laughs> it's funny you should say that because we're, we're working with. Um, I mean, I, I assume you may have seen some of the work of Dr. Ye Tao of Harvard, who Silas interviewed on his last you know cycle uh, weeks ago. Anyway, um, I'm gonna mute you again, so uh, no, <laughs> that's all right. So, Dr. Ye Tao of Harvard, uh, is um, our favorite SRM expert in the world, and we believe he's totally got it all, basically all figured out from a technical standpoint. It just so happens that there's another team at Harvard led by a Dr. Keith that is funded by Bill Gates that's working on a whole different solution that's also SRM. The Bill Gates, Dr. Keith solution involves spraying a bunch of shit in the atmosphere and using that to dim the whole planet whereas what doctor like shit literally shit like cow shit people shit no not but no you, no, you know like <laughs> chalk or certain particulates or you know silver and nitro i don't know what the heck i don't know but i just stuff but um and i i've got a big problem with that for for two big reasons one is unpredictability and uncontrollability of unintended consequences. 
and the second is that it causes general dimming as opposed to the very localized reflection that we need so that we don't negatively impact plant life, including agriculture, doing general dimming. We need localized. So over certain sections of the ocean, over certain sections of desert, over certain sections of the Arctic, et cetera. Um, and Yetau agrees. So we're, we're, we're basically in the Yetau camp. Um, but, uh, but the short answer is that Bill Gates is a, is a funder and proponent of SRM. That's actually good news. Um, and so we just need to get him to focus on supporting the right group at Harvard <laughs> instead of the wrong one. <laughs> but um, anyway. Uh, yeah, because basically what they're proposing to spray up into the atmosphere eventually will have to come down like the particles, particles that we already put up in pollution. They'll eventually have to come down. And then we're just breathing that lot in then as well. But the, you know what I mean? So solar radiation, reflective radiation and management is obviously the sensible way because it's, it's ongoing, long-term, continuous, and no pollution going into the atmosphere. Exactly. Silas had mentioned in his thing about the cooling effect, I think he mentioned sulfur type gases that have a cooling effect. He had one of his nifty little diagrams. Some of the diagrams I I can't really understand. <laughs> I, he's probably thinks he's really simplifying his, his message for the rest of us, but um, there was one that, that I saw that made sense, you know. But that's great that Bill Gates is behind it because uh, he seems to be kind of a gatekeeper for a lot of things. Yep. But the bottom line is that no matter how you slice it, we need to pour a far greater level of intelligence onto the SRM urgency than we have today. And, uh, but it's ending hunger th through our initial uh, program uh, that will build that collective super intelligence and just really get us all together, get humanity united on so many levels, including the spiritual, emotional, you know, interconnectedness as a species. We're all in this together. We're all eating together right and we're all eating the same good foods hey that's the tat thing eating together that's the thing that's the tagline you just said it together eating together eating together eating together hey, speaking of which my mom is calling so i'm going to take a break talk with her you all carry on i'll keep recording unless you tell me not to that's i'm taking a, a break Mom. <laughs>